why, what does it matter if you make these Fs wider or narrower, or longer or shorter, or closer set or further set, or closer to the edge or not closer to the edge? Most violin makers discuss the F holes in terms of you know, artistic style and aesthetic considerations, but it's a very well worked out design for function and for sound. I mean, some of the things that are, are, are key about the, the design from a, uh, from a functional point of view, they've avoided any sharp, any sharp cuts. So in the areas where it would be subject to breakage, here, 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 and here, it's a rounded cut. And not only is it a rounded, so there's no sharp line, but it also um, spreads the spreads the force towards the base bar and towards the edge. Uh, the F's also serve to you know to break the arching. This one's going this. There's a it's convex from here to here, and then concave from here to here, and the F's give a very convenient point for that that uh, change in inflection of the arching. Now the lower lobes are placed rather close to the to the C bouts. It's a good question why, you know, this, this area is very subject to cracks. So you'd think from a certain point of view, from a stability point of view, it's not a very good design because they've created a weak area. So there must be a very important reason why all classic violins have this hole rather close to the edge. Well, what does the hole being close to the edge do? Well, you, it, there's this tongue, basically this, this F wing, whatever you want to call it, um, that is, is almost hanging like a, like a tab. It's, it's cut this middle section of the violin completely free, or almost completely free. Um, the upper lobes are set rather close, so they've made basically this island, uh, or the isthmus, whatever you want to call it, this island is, is uh, freed up. This is probably the most flexible area of the violin. And they, then they allow the C bouts to go down separately and for the instrument to flex this way. It's like a manta ray or a bird, a pterodactyl. So the bridge can, can pump back and forth like this. So once the bass bar is in there, It'll allow a lot of large motion. So I'm trying to get a sense of how strong the base bar, the whole combination of base bar and top is. Because it's these kind of large motions that are going to produce the low sounds. shaping of this area is quite important, the way the F hole works within the arch um, will determine a lot about how much motion there'll be in this portion of the top. And this area here is probably the most active area of the top in low frequencies and the most important for the deep sound of the violin. If the violin bends like this, the, the, the tab can vibrate up and actually quite a lot of sound especially in higher frequencies, is radiated by the F-hole lobes themselves. So it, um, from a tonal point of view, it's very important to have this area freed up, even though from a structural point of view, it creates problems. And there's most old fiddles do have little cracks there. Um, now, there is a, uh, a fluting, a hollowing in this direction, which creates a, almost a tube-like structure in this direction. Now, a tube means that it can, it can vibrate crosswise like this, but it would be rather stiff in length and also lighter than it would otherwise be. So they've created rather a stiff, light, um, but uh, somewhat freed up to vibrate a little loudspeaker there, a little tweeter for them. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And at different frequencies, they'll vibrate in different combinations. Sometimes this one's going like crazy. Sometimes this one's moving a lot. Occasionally this, sometimes you'll get opposite motion. So for each of the frequencies that'll be active in a sound, you can find an area on the fiddle that will be resonant. 
So this, this uh, very lovely shape turns out to have a, a, a great deal of sophistication from a design point of view and an engineering point of view. And changing any of those, those aspects will have an effect on the sound. Thank you.